This is a small and easy to build cottage that I built on Enshrouded and in this video I'm going to show you how to build it alongside giving you some building tips that you can use in your own structures to make them more visually appealing. I'll give you a quick tour of the structure so you know what to expect. As you can see it's something that's a little bit more interesting than the kind of box builds that you're probably used to seeing or might even be building yourself. We've got the flower patches with a little porch area with the bench and if we go in this main entrance here you'll see the flame altar with all the craftspeople just lined up along the left hand side. But you can see that there's plenty of space here to utilise this space however you like. Out the back of the structure we've got another porch area where I like to keep all of my workbenches and crafting equipment such as the grinding stones, the kilns, the smelters and things like that. Back inside now you might be wondering where we sleep in this place and up just above our heads you notice this little room which is hidden away with one of these pool anchor grappling hooks. We go up, we have this cosy little bedroom with everything you might need for probably one or two players, but you could always extend that room out along the length of the structure if you wanted to fit more players in. Back in the main room now, you can see that we have a trap door here, and if we go downstairs, you can see a small and compact basement space for whatever you might need to use it for. So if you want to know how to build this specific basement in the easiest way possible, stick around until the end of the video to find out. Now that you know what to expect, let's get into the build part of the video. And just remember, if you find this video useful or helpful at any stage, remember to click the like button and consider subscribing. The first thing you need to do is find a location where you want to build your base. Now I've chosen out this location, it's just slightly north of the long keep. So it's just right at the start of the game. Then you're going to come into your crafting menu with V and craft yourself a flame altar with five stone. I already have one, so I'm going to place it down just sort of with enough space at each end. The flame altar is kind of going to be in the middle of our base, so just somewhere in the center should work fine. And you'll need to clear out any things around about it, if there is any. Now at this stage you can grab your rake and flatten out the ground. So you just select the level of the ground that you want to build the rest of the ground to. Click and hold, and as you drag it and move around, the rest of the ground will be dragged to that level. That might be something that's more useful for you depending on where you're building your base, but the ground here is pretty flat, so I'm not going to bother with that. The next thing you need to do is decide on the material that you want to build your base with. So grab your construction hammer and what I recommend doing is getting a few options, whatever options you might have to hand and just laying out one wall piece next to each other. So you're going to have the wood block, the rough stone block, maybe you'll have some shroud wood. I think this bone block is pretty cool but it's quite difficult to get enough bone to build a whole structure out of and it makes scary noises so not ideal. And this timbered block. Then I recommend just getting the roof pieces and just sort of laying in different variations together until you have an understanding of what you want your base to look like. So in my opinion the rough stone with the plant fibre roof looks pretty cool, the bone block looks pretty cool but my favourite is the half timbered block with the plant fibre roof and that's what I'm going to use for this build so I'm just going to remove these now that I've made my decision. Okay, so another consideration is where the sun's going to be. I always like to have the front of my structure facing towards the sun or at least getting a good amount of sunlight. So I'm going to build the front of my house on the north side. From here, I'll grab the four meter ceiling and just start to lay out a floor plan for my structure. Now, the reason I'm using a ceiling, even though the foundation sounds like it makes more sense for the bottom of a structure, is that the foundation takes 256 of that block. That might be more beneficial to you if you have very uneven ground, but the ground is very flat here. So I'm just going to make use of the ceiling blocks because they only take up 32. So I'm going to go all the way around the altar using the snapping grid. And then at the front of the structure, I'm going to place down another row like this. Then on the right hand side, we're going to go and place down another row all the way along the length of the structure and out by one more like this. So this is going to be the layout of the actual structure itself. So at this stage I can go ahead and grab our 4 meter wide walls and I'm going to change the material down to half timbered blocks. So starting at the front left, I'm going to grab the window frames, two window frames, walls all the way down, pop a window frame in this corner, door frame in the centre, and we'll have a wide wall and a window. On the right hand side we're going to be using wide walls and we're only going to come three down here. We'll change on to the two meter narrow wall, back to the four meter door frame, and back to the two meter narrow wall. And that's going to give us that little porch shape at the front of our structure. Next up we're going to grab the window frame 
And you have to be careful with this piece so it automatically kind of wants to snap here in line with this piece here. But I actually want to drag it forward a bit so I have this sort of overlap here like this. If you don't do this, you're going to have some issues with the roof pieces, so just something to be aware of. Window frame, and we're actually just going to use the door frame piece above the door, because we're going to place down a double door here. Like this. Now we're going to go back to our floor pieces, so I'm using the rough wood blocks, and we'll grab the 4 meter ceiling box, and we're going to place out some space for our bedroom on the right hand side of the structure. So. I think 3 wide by 2 deep is probably enough and in fact we might actually just need to change this block or the 2 meter ceiling block along the right hand side and then with this we can use the 2 meter stairs to place down our stairs like this and now we've got a good platform to start building the roof on so I like to use the snapping grid with the roof I'm going to place one down at the front of the structure like this and all the way down the back of the structure like that. Up top we'll have two roof pieces coming in like this and then we have an inner roof corner where we can just connect these two pieces. Similar thing on the other side so we're going to start with the two roof pieces and I'm going to try and jump around here. Done actually a good job of that and we're going to go back to the inner roof corners here. This down one like this. And as you can see, the roof is already starting to come together. Next up, we have the straight roof top. And all we're going to do now is start to bridge this gap between the two sides. For this middle section where all the sides meet, we're going to use the 2 meter inner roof corners and the 2 meter roof sides. We can then go back to our 4 meter straight rooftops and if you've done it correctly it should look like this the one issue you might have is at the back of the structure as you can see on this corner here this piece actually has the little indent here so we're just going to go ahead and fix that i'm going to use the two meter side roof take off the snapping grid and when it's saying that you should use four materials so in the center there it says one four zero three divided by four so it's saying that it costs four blocks to make up that difference there and I'm just going to place that in like so. Now I actually want to have a slight overlap so I'm going to do the exact same on the other side and you'll be able to tell when you're in the right spot because you'll only be using around eight materials. So you can see we've got a slight overhang on this side of the structure. We do want to have the exact same on the front side of the structure and then we will also do the same on the right hand side of the structure. So now with the roof complete I can come inside. I'm going to grab the construction hammer and go to the four meter what is this called? The stepped wall. Grab my half timbered blocks. Start to lock them in on the snapping grid. Connecting the roof and the walls that we placed earlier. I'm going to place down a wall frame in the centre. And then I'm going to have the 2 meter stepped wall. I'm just using Q and the scroll wheel just to put it further away from myself. And that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to do the exact same on the opposite side. We we'll also need to fill in this gap here with our upstairs room. If we go upstairs, we can also do it on this outside wall too. Okay, looks good to me. I'm going to place down a little bit of detail outside. So I'm going to grab the 2 meter ceiling blocks and go back to whatever material you built the floor with. For me, that's the rough wood block. And I'm going to place two just in front of the door there and also on the side here. And this is just going to kind of and be like a little pathway to the house because what I like to do is grab the 4 meter ceiling block with the rough stone and create this kind of path that's just going to lead over to the side here. Maybe I'll just put stairs on the side like this. Now this is a good example of when you might want to place down foundation pieces instead of the ceiling pieces. So as you can see there's quite a big gap under these foundations depending on where you're building the space that's going to change but this might be a location I would be tempted to put foundations underneath. Alternatively, I could come on to the construction hammer and go to the one meter blocks or even go to like the two meter columns and just sort of place a few in underneath to make it look like it's actually supported. On the inside, we could start to put some detail down now. So I don't have too much, 
but I like to just keep it all on the snapping grid. So I've got this polished scrap brazier, put it next to the front door for a little bit extra light. And then what I like to do is actually with the construction hammer, I'm going to grab these one meter wall blocks and just sort of line it up with the center of the flame altar. Come fairly high and just mark out this sort of pattern like this. So it's taken out two, miss one, take out two, miss one, take out two. Do the same on the other side. And the reason that I do this is because I've actually just been grabbing all the crafts people and just placing them all within this build for the time being. I will probably build them all their own house within sort of a compound eventually. So if that's something you'd like to see videos on, then just let me know in the comments. But for now, all five of them are just residing right here on the left hand side of my build. So I'm going to do a little bit of customization now. I realized that I don't actually like this window here too much. So I kind of want it to be more central to this location. So I'm going to place down where I want the window to be. Fill in this window. And I'm going to double this up as a sort of double window like that. And I'm going to take out another strip on this wall. Just for an extra bit of light. Do the same on this side. And I think that this side at the front of the structure actually needs to be a window as well. Place in a couple more strips. I don't actually know how many I've taken out, but just something so that it looks quite equal. I'm going to place my workbench down here and place down a standing torch next to it. I don't have too many decorative pieces right now, so I'm just kind of making do with what I have. But this is a build that you can definitely just make at the start of the game and it's going to grow with you. Here I'm placing down the wooden window frames. So upstairs, this is where I like the bedroom to be. So I'm going to place the bed at the back there. This polished cabinet can go here. And I also have this polished wooden bedside table. It can go here. And the candle up top. Also got a rug. And despite actually having this stairway here, what you'll actually realise that later in the game, this is a very slight spoiler alert by the way, what you can do is take these out, place down a little beam along here, and you can actually craft yourself one of these grappling hook pull anchors. And I think this is quite a cool little novelty thing. And you can just zip up to your bedroom like that. Now that bedroom is probably enough for one, two, maybe three people at a push. Or you could just fill out the whole second floor if you wanted to. So out the back, this is where I'm placing all my workstations at the moment. And the way that I'm doing that is with the rough wood blocks, ceiling pieces, come along the length of the structure, and we're going to be coming out too wide. And then I'm going to grab the door frame, and I'm going to come two up, remove the bottom one, and then just use that as a snapping point around the rest of the perimeter for this outside section. I've seen a lot of different creators kind of play with the different material types. Personally, I like to keep it quite simple. I don't think that at least the starting materials mix too well. The flint walls look pretty good with stone, but in my opinion, I like to just keep it quite simple. So I'm going to just leave it like this, and I'll show you how I like to set everything out just in case you're interested. So I like to put down the forge just at the side here and I'm going to have the kiln and then last but not least we'll have the smelter just at the side here like this. On the opposite side got the table saw. Now again like I said I haven't actually unlocked everything yet but I know for a fact that there's going to be enough space here for all the things that you need especially as a solo player if there's more of you you might need to extend this area slightly but this area works for me as it is. Now I actually have a couple more seed beds that I have at a different base that I'll probably end up using here. But I normally place down three seed beds along this wall here. Next up we've got the mortar and guiding stones. Now I can't actually remember where I had these placed so I'm just going to place them in here somewhere. Drying racks have their own little place down in this corner and the hand spindle can go over here. So like I say I normally have a few seed beds that come along the length of this but that looks okay for now. And now it's really just about decorating the rest of the build to however you like it. Now, one thing that I actually do like to do to add a bit more detail to my builds is with material you have the walls built in, just sort of putting a frame around the door. So it's not actually called a door frame, you have to do it manually. But just having a one block space around the door like this just makes it look a lot more realistic. So I like to do this on the exterior and the interior. What I'll probably do is fill in this gap a little bit now. I've just realised I could have probably just been using the columns instead of doing them one by one. At the front porch, again, similar to what was done at the back of the structure, grabbing the refined wood blocks. And there's not actually too much space here, so I'm just going to 
So I'll place them in manually. I'm going to place down this sort of fence around the outside like this. At the front, what I like to do is grab the cube two meters on the terrain, come down to farm soil. And then if you do have any flowers, you can sort of just place them a little bit randomly. So I just like these purple and yellow flowers. Place them something like this. Now I'm going to unsnap for this wooden bench. Hold R, twist it around and place in something like that. Now the build is practically done at this stage just depending on how much more you want to add to it as you develop through the game. I did say at the start that I would also have a little treat for you and that is going to be how to build a basement here. Now I want to have a basement underneath this part of the structure. This is where the foundation pieces come in very, very useful. I'm going to get the four meter foundation piece, place one in like so, take it out. You'll see it's removed the ground underneath in a perfectly aligned position. And then if I do the same on this side here, what that's going to allow me to do is lock on to the bottom of this foundation block here, place down another one, and if I remove that, this is the level that my structure is going to be at. We're going to remove the floors, two foundation pieces, take them out, two foundation pieces, take them out, and depending on how big you want the basement to be, I'm going to leave it just as big as the bedroom upstairs, so this is a perfect size for me. Go back to the wood walls, and depending on whatever material you want to place underneath, I might just actually stick with the half timbered blocks just because I like the look of them, and then we're just following along similar to what we had before on the top of the structure. Using the 2 meter stairs, I'm going to go back to the rough wood block. Place down two, just like that. And then for the 4 meter ceiling pieces, we're just going to fill in the gap that we've taken out. So this could even be used as a secondary bedroom for any guests that you have in your world. Or what I've done previously is use it as a store. Now again, another spoiler, if you don't already know, you end up with magical chests in this, so it's basically storage boxes that you can pull from anywhere within the flame altar limits. One thing that you'll gain access to later in the game is these secret floor passages. I'm going to place one down here. As you can see, when I click it, it opens up. I can go down to my basement, come back up, close it, and then we've got the pull anchor on this side to get to the upstairs bedroom. And yeah, as you can see, very spacious build. You've definitely got far more space than you actually need. So it really just depends on what you want to do with it. But yeah, half timbered blocks with the plant fiber roof, really easy materials to come by within the sort of early stages of the game. And I just think it looks really good. So if you made it this far, you now know how to build this cottage and hopefully you learned some building tips along the way. If you liked the video, please do leave it a like as it's a huge help to me and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.